Hey guys, have you ever opened your chocolate bar just to see something a little disappointing? Like this grayish or white haze instead of that shiny brown surface? And I know this looks like maybe mold or something has started to chomp on your chocolate, but this is actually called chocolate bloom and has nothing to do with microorganisms. Come on, let's talk about it. Even if you've never heard of chocolate bloom, you may have seen it before. So usually chocolate is supposed to have this nice, glossy, shiny surface. But if you have accidentally left your candy bar in your car on a warm day, or maybe in a sunroom on a deck somewhere with higher temperatures, and it's turned to this sort of chalky gray, grayish white haze, this is chocolate bloom and it doesn't have to be this bad. This is a pretty extreme example. Even smaller specks of white or gray are considered chocolate bloom. I know the bloomed areas might make it look like the chocolate has somehow gone rotten or some microorganism has started to grow, but chocolate bloom has nothing to do with spoilage and it's totally safe to eat. Instead, chocolate bloom really is due to changes in the fat in the chocolate and the main fat in chocolate is called cocoa butter. Now, cocoa butter is a bit of the pain in the butt to work with, and that's because cocoa butter is polymorphic. Now, what polymorphic means is that when cocoa butter goes from a liquid oil, crystallizes into a solid fat, it has many different crystal forms it can take, right? Many crystals or many forms, polymorphic. And each of these crystals has slightly different behavior. It might look a little different. It might uh, have a different texture. And because of this complication with cocoa butter, when I was in graduate school, we always had students working on this. I always had a lab mate actively researching chocolate bloom. So it is still a topic that is being looked into. The problem with cocoa butter is not the fact that it's polymorphic because most fats are actually polymorphic. And a typical fat has three different polymorphs, which we call alpha, beta prime, and beta. And you'll notice that these different polymorphs, they have different melting points, they have different stabilities, they might have different characteristics. And so for a typical fat, we would see it have these three different polymorphs. Now the problem with cocoa butter is that instead of three polymorphs, cocoa butter has six. And that's a lot of different polymorphs to think about because remember, each of these crystalline forms has different stabilities, melting temperatures, might have different appearances, textures, that sort of thing. So this is getting quite complicated. So in cocoa butter, we have these six different polymorphs. So we've named them a bit differently than a typical fat. I think it's easiest to call them just polymorphs one through six. So you usually see these represented as the Roman numerals, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's, I think that's the easiest way to talk about it. You might also see people call these different polymorphs in cocoa butter using the traditional alpha, beta prime, and beta um, terminology. But again, in this video, I'm going to stick with the numbers. I think it's easier just to say five or four. Now, what makes things interesting is that only one of these polymorphs is associated with a high quality chocolate, and that's polymorph five. And typically why we like polymorph five is it gives chocolate that glossy, shiny texture. And it also gives a really good snap when you break off a piece of chocolate from the bar. So when someone is trying to make a chocolate bar, when someone's manufacturing chocolate bars at a really big scale, they are specifically conditioning or working the chocolate to get it in form five only. And you might have heard of this process. It's called tempering. People temper chocolate so that they get it into this form five polymorph. So when I went to the grocery store to get my chocolate bar that now looks like this, I'm guessing when I bought it, it was in form five, right? It would have looked beautiful, shiny, something like this. So what happened to make it look all bloomed? Well, form five is associated with a good chocolate. There's one polymorph associated with chocolate bloom and that's form six. So anytime polymorph five 
changes into polymorph six, this is typically associated with that visible chocolate bloom. Now, how would the polymorph change when the manufacturer probably specifically tempered the chocolate to crystallize into form five? Well, that was my fault. Yeah, after buying this bar at the store, I accidentally forgot it on the passenger seat of my car on a nice hot sunny day. And you can probably guess what happened, right? My chocolate bar is melting now. Or I should really say the cocoa butter crystals are melting. The cocoa butter in that polymorph five is melting into a liquid oil. So it actually loses that polymorph. It's no longer stuck or tempered in that polymorph five. It's just a liquid oil. And now when my car becomes cooler again, maybe it's nighttime, that liquid oil wants to recrystallize back into solid fat at these cold temperatures. And the bad news is it doesn't recrystallize back into polymorph five. It actually recrystallizes into the most stable polymorph, which is form six, which is some bad news for the quality of this chocolate. And that's because form six is known for having really spiky shaped crystals, sort of needle-like shaped crystals that are huge and make a very rough surface on the chocolate. And it's the formation of these polymorph six crystals that makes it look like the chocolate has become sort of this white or grayish haze. These crystals on the surface of the chocolate actually diffract light differently and we start to see that bloomed chocolate. In the end, the change from this glossy brown chocolate to this white or grayish bloom chocolate is really due to the cocoa butter changing from polymorph 5 to polymorph 6. And why did this happen? Well, in this case, it happened because I stored this chocolate in my hot car. So we would call this storage bloom, meaning it was my fault because I stored it in bad conditions. It wasn't the manufacturer's fault. And so what's the moral of the story here? I guess it's be nice to your chocolate, store them in the right conditions. So if you've made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time.